Our blood vessels supply every part of our body with nutrients and oxygen in a complex branching system of tiny tubes. It's said that laid end to end, one person's veins, arteries and capillaries would stretch 100,000 kilometers, enough to encircle the Earth two and a half times. After they've been measured using lasers, recreated in plastic and seeded with specially grown body cells, these artificial versions of natural blood vessels could serve as replacement parts. They are urgently needed. The need for such small blood vessel systems, or small substitutes, can't be currently met. Today, you can only take small vessels from elsewhere in the patient's body. But especially in cases of heart attack, those tiny vessels are needed to replace clogged vessels. So at some point, these artificial blood vessels could be very helpful. Four Fraunhofer Institutes are working together to make that vision a reality. Kirsten Borcher's team faces huge challenges. One of the biggest ones is finding the right mixture of polymer materials to make the tubes. This little flask contains an awful lot of work. It's not just one component, but a composition of various substances. And even once we've optimized the mixture, we'll have to see afterward whether the hardened plastic is too brittle or too soft. We are constantly experimenting with new combinations of materials. We müssen diese Materialkomposition immer wieder neu aufsetzen. Blood vessels are flexible, highly resilient, and they constantly regenerate. Those are exacting demands on a plastic implant, which also has to be long-lasting. For years, the research team has been fine-tuning the right mixtures of materials that can be processed with laser light. A healthy heart pumps about 10,000 liters of blood through the arteries every day. Coronary arteries can be replaced by vessels from the leg in a bypass operation. But removing a section of artery longer than 10 centimeters poses severe health problems. The researchers hope their laser technology can help. Each pulse of light hardens the plastic. The polymerized plastic forms with a spatial precision of a thousandth of a millimeter. Layer by layer, the process produces small three-dimensional tubes. The scientists are working on them to imitate blood vessels ever more closely. So far, however, these are just models. The smaller the vessels, the harder it is to simulate them. Tiny deviations in the branchings could hinder the flow of blood and lead to deposits and clogging. The body registers plastic as a foreign body and tries to reject it. To fool the immune system, Kirsten Borsch's pipettes biomolecules into the artificial vessels. The idea is that patients' own cells will adhere to them. We have to biologize the surfaces of the material so that the body no longer recognizes it as plastic. One way of doing that is to put a layer of biological molecules or cells on the surfaces. And of course, we try to design a material whose mechanical properties resemble those of a real blood vessel. And that is incredibly difficult. In a bioreactor, blood vessel cells are being settled on the inner walls of the artificial vessels. Here, all the factors that influence the process can be precisely controlled and varied as needed. Only once the cells have been successfully seeded are the conditions met for optimal and disturbance-free blood flow. The inside surfaces of the artificial blood vessels are processed to make it easier for biomolecules to adhere to them. After the cells are settled on the walls, each tube is subjected to a careful quality control. The cells have been treated with a fluorescent pigment. The colored light makes them visible under the microscope. At the moment, we are on the way to growing cells on these surfaces.
But we still have a long way to go before we can be certain that the cells will stay there. And then we need clinical studies and animal experiments. A lot remains to be done. They may take years to come to fruition, but arteries based on plastic represent a great chance for medicine.